good morning to all our delegates and friends in Kenya, and good noon to everyone in India. This is Darvendra Joshi, your host for the day, and I welcome you to this IMDI webinar series, concurrently organized with the virtual trade show titled Medical and Healthcare Africa 2020, focusing on medical healthcare and anti-epidemic products. With close to around 1 billion people and a GDP of approximately $1.7 trillion, Africa presents a sizable investment opportunity for India also and for the rest of the world. Today, around 26 of Africa's 54 countries have achieved middle class income status. Five of the 12 fastest growing economies in the world are in Africa. Looking to this opportunity, and the long history of Indo-African trade and business relationships, the organizers have planned this virtual trade show and the webinar series for three days. The virtual trade expo and the webinars are supported by the Ministry of Health of the Republic of Kenya, the Association of Indian Medical Device Industry, in short, AMED, the Medical Association of Tanzania, the Engineering Export Promotion Council of India, EEPC India, Medical Association of Kenya, Critical Care Society of Kenya, National Health Agency, Government of India, Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and the Association of Kenya Medical Laboratory Scientific Officers. Before I move on to today's program, let me briefly introduce to you the organizers. This webinar is organized by Classic Computer Services, a company providing information resources for medical technology and markets through publications, internet portals, exhibitions, conferences, and market research since the last 25 years. The organization designs and develops conference programs aimed at specifically targeted audiences in order to provide strategic and timely information. They have been publishing a techno-economic news magazine titled Medical Plastics Data Service for Medical Plastics, Diagnostics and the Pharmaceutical Industry, being published since the 1994. The company also promotes two internet portals, www.medicalplasticsindia.com and the www.medisourceasia.com. The organized offer virtual trade show, Radical Communications, have established themselves as one of the renowned international exhibition and conference organizations in India and Kenya by organization, organizing various exhibitions in varied business sectors in the domestic as well as the international circuit. Radical communications with their experience of more than 10 years in the exhibition industry have partnered and represented India at various global exhibitions that have taken place in different parts of the world. Today is the inaugural day of this trade show and the webinar series. And the theme for today's webinar is India, a reliable source of medical device products and technologies for Africa. On behalf of the organizers and the delegates, we welcome as the chief guest, Ms. Murthy. Wangangi, the Chief Administrative Secretary, Ministry of Health Kenya, who will be joining us very shortly. Sri Rajiv Nath, Forum Coordinator, the Association of Indian Medical Device Industry as the keynote speaker. Dr. Eric Ruto, the Vice President of the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Dr. Elizabeth Gitau, the President of the Kenya Medical Association. Mr. Mahesh Desai, Chairman of the Engineering Export Promotion Council India and Mr. Ravi Srivastava, the Chief Operating Officer of Omni Lens Private Limited India as special guests. May I now first invite Mr. Sanyal Desai, the Managing Director, Radical Communications, the organizers of the virtual trade show to give a welcome address, please. Can I ask the back office people to please unmute Mr. Sanyal Desai. Sanyal Bhai. Thank you so much, Dharmindra Bhai. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Sanyal Desai, 
CEO of Radical Communication. We are an exhibition organizing company. On behalf of Radical Communication, I am very much pleased to welcome all of you here today in our first virtual event, Meditech and Healthcare Africa 2020, focusing on medical and healthcare sector of Africa with a specific focus on East Africa region. Before we get started, I would like to express my sincere appreciation to all the Corona warriors. across the world for their selfless efforts in the service of humanity i am privileged to welcome dr murthy uh, chief administrative secretary ministry of health at republic of kenya with this i would also like to welcome our other dignity panel members mr rajiv nath dr eric ruto dr elizabeth gitau mr ravi shrivastav our webinar partner uh, mr pandya mr dharmendra and special mention for mr mahesh desai chairman epc in today's opening ceremony i would like to thank and welcome each and individual dignitaries on and off the panel friends from the media exhibitors visitors and association who have chosen to be part of meditech and healthcare africa 2020 a virtual trade show due to a subsequent health and economic downturn caused by the pandemic globally it has marked uh, the beginning of a new normal i hope this virtual event acts as a stepping stone for us to navigate through the challenging time during next 5 days various plan activities and webinars will be held in this virtual event where we will be engaging business like leaders and torch bearers of health sectors along with the ministers and officials representing the government on different countries to speak on healthcare sector trends opportunities and challenges brought by this pandemic uh, we are happy to share that totally we have about 60 plus exhibitors from india china malaysia dubai and kenya who will be showcasing different different products on and services on medical and healthcare sector uh, i wish this platform to uh, all the best everyone and thank you so much for everyone's support and we look forward to have a successful event in this coming five days thank you so much thank you very much mr sanyal uh, i am sure with the new uh, newly developed uh, virtual exhibition software that you have done uh, you will be able to provide a lot of services to a lot of various sectors not only in india and kenya but to other parts of the world also we wish you all the best with this virtual exhibition uh, this It has been a great initiative, uh, particularly in the aftermath of this pandemic. And your contribution shall go a long way in helping businesses normalize during the lo lockdown period. I now request uh, Mr. D. L. Pandya, the webinar convener and uh, managing director, Medical Plastic Data Service, the other organizers, organizer, to address the webinar, please, Mr. Pandya. <coughs> uh, good morning. Uh, the learned speakers for today's webinar and delegate friends from Africa as well as India, uh, both from the medical devices industry as well as healthcare industry. For the three-day seminar series, we feel privileged to be associated with the Radical Communications, supported by the leading healthcare and industry sector associations from Kenya and Tanzania. So first of all, on behalf of IMDI conferences, I welcome all the dignitaries uh, and also the supporting association for this both uh, virtual exhibition as well as the webinar series. Under the IMDI conferences and now be, uh, the uh, now being the webinars being organized since 2001 with the sole objective of promoting Make in India mission. with support and cooperation of leading industry association in medical devices plastics pharma as well as healthcare sectors as well as government regulatory research and academic organizations our special appreciation and uh, gratitude is for the kind support of the various kenya based and the tanzania based associations ministry of health chamber of commerce and uh, other associations for giving the cooperation and support for this event the objective of this series of webinars as well as the virtual exhibition is to create a platform for cooperation between medical device industry as well as 
uh, as well as healthcare service organizations from india and various countries in africa for growth on both sides of the countries the objective is also to help companies from india and africa to face challenges post pandemic and the new normal in the and in the new normal situation in the coming future and we have this two three day webinar series focus on three different important uh, aspects of the medical device sector the first one will be to highlight and uh, the india india as a reliable source of medical device products and technologies with uh, for africa and how we can co collaborate with the various institutions and organizations in africa the second webinar is focus on safety and risk management for healthcare professionals and the third and the last semi webinar will be focusing on technologies quality requirements and business opportunities for medical textiles personal protective equipments face masks etc i am sure the delegates will certainly benefit from the participation thank you very much once again for your participation thank you very much uh, mr pandya i am sure uh, your efforts in organizing this webinar series will bring fruits in terms of better business between entrepreneurs in africa and india friends since we are organizing this seminar on a virtual platform but we want to continue the indian traditions of seeking the blessings of god whenever we start some good activity we shall inaugurate the webinar by a virtual lighting of lamp and so i request my back office team to kindly arrange for the virtual lighting of lamp thank you hi this was in fact a very new thing and uh, it is good that we could have the blessings of god let us all pray to the almighty to lead us to light at the end of this pandemic tunnel friends it's a great privilege for us to have ms uh, mercy wangangi the chief administrative officer ministry of health kenya in this webinar she is a medical doctor with a bachelor's of medicine and a bachelor's of surgery from the nairobi university and later she earned a master's degree in health economics and policy from the university of adelaide australia she has served her country as medical doctor and later within the ministry of health kenya in various positions before being appointed as the chief administrative secretary in the ministry of health in the republic of kenya may i request ms mercy mugangi the chief administrative officer ministry of health kenya to give her inaugural address please back office please unmute her ms mercy please i can see her there is she there
If she is not there, can we take her later, Sanyal Bhai? Yeah, perfectly. Okay, sir, no problem. I think we will we'll go ahead with the program. Yeah. Sure. And then as soon as she joins, uh, we'll, we'll, I, I can see her on the list, but I believe it's just a logged in, but she is not there. Uh, maybe some technical error, we continue with the program. Yeah, we continue uh, further. Okay. So we are pleased to have with us our keynote speaker, Mr. Rajiv Nath the forum chairman for the Association of Indian Medical Device Industry, India, and the managing director, Hindustan Syringes and Medical Devices Limited. He and his company are known for creating a niche for their disposable syringe called DispoVan, which is today the most popular brand in syringe market in India. A purpose-oriented person, Mr. Nath has been instrumental in influencing a large number of medical device industry professionals and manufacturers to form the umbrella organization that he is the founder and chairman for. He also leads a number of other business and professional organizations and sits on many technical committees and advisory groups of the central government of India. He has traveled widely across the globe and has attended various meetings of the WHO, the ICASA, the SIGN, the ISO, and the STOP TB initiatives. May I request Mr. Rajiv Nath to give his keynote speech, please. Mr. Nath, uh, back office, can you please unmute Mr. Rajiv Nath? Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Joshi, for the warm welcome. Mr. Thank Dubai. you. i just uh, share my screen. Good morning to all my friends in uh, East Africa, in Kenya. Uh, a very warm welcome to Dr. Mercy, Dr. Eric uh, Ruto, Dr. Elizabeth, uh, Mr. Desai from EPC, uh, Mr. Srivastav from Omni, uh, Mr. Desai, Mr. Joshi, and Mr. Pandya for organizing this uh, uh, event, the exhibition and the conference alongside. So I'm very glad with this initiative because I have been personally been visiting Kenya, uh, Tanzania and Uganda over the last two decades, number of times, and I have many good friends uh, over there based on those relationships developed over the last two decades. So medical devices, you all know very well, uh, constitutes of various consumables, disposables, electronics, equipments, implants, and also uh, diagnostics. India imports nearly about uh, close to about six and a half million dollars worth of uh, medical devices. As IBIT, we represent uh, more than 350 uh, members, uh, but there are more than 1200 manufacturers in medical devices whose interests should be taken care of in India and internationally. And we have got more than 200 associate members who are key suppliers uh, or key uh, stakeholders in the medical devices uh, fraternity in India. As uh, Mr. Joshi mentioned, we work very closely with the government of India and with the EPC uh, to take the Indian uh, brands forward internationally. So I would like to introduce you to the uh, key brands in India and the key manufacturers which uh, the Kenyan importers may like to uh, seek out and to reach out to uh, so that they can uh, contact them for their needs. So in disposables, uh, uh, the leading uh, manufacturers are uh, HMD, uh, the sun switches and medical devices. Uh, this is my own company. We manufacture medical disposables and we have been part of the uh, making, uh, making medical injection safer initiative in Kenya and in um, the whole of uh, ICASA, uh, bringing uh, uh, the technology of water disabled syringes uh, and the single use of syringes uh, to the Eastern region, which uh, got the injection safety policies in Kenya, uh, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, etc. And uh, we have also been assisting 
uh, the governments in Tanzania and in uh, Uganda to bring forward regulations, uh, the uh, TFDA regulations on medical devices, uh, the complete details and the initiatives were pretty much uh, initial, uh, I would say, uh, authors uh, were from our end. We also have medical electrodes, which makes uh, disposable electrodes. Uh, Kanam Latex, which is one of the largest manufacturers for surgical gloves. Uh, G Surgiware is a reputed manufacturer for medical garments and also for um, uh, shunts, uh, possibly the largest manufacturer for affordable shunts worldwide. MRK is another reputed manufacturer for surgical gloves. In consumables, we've got Romsons, which is for the, the widest range of plastic uh, medical disposables in the country. And similarly, Polymedicure has also got a very wide, a wide range of uh, plastic medical disposables. Healthium is a reputed manufacturer for uh, surgical sutures. And BL Life Sciences is a, a reputed manufacturer for uh, kits and for cardiac products. Uh, Tyler Orthotics in Chandigarh is a reputed manufacturer for assistive and for uh, implants for the orthopedics. Uh, in electronics, we got Privetron Healthcare and in Ellinger's, uh, they make x ray machines. Uh, BPL uh, similarly makes uh, uh, many kind of medical electronic equipments, including ventilators. And Scanray is uh, now become very popular uh, worldwide because of their huge capacity, which they geared up for ventilators. ITPL is uh, very well known along with Ellinger's also for making uh, the OT, uh, the uh, uh, cardiac uh, this, uh, tables and machines. In equipments, we got Medimark, Medmark, which is uh, the leader in India for making hospital beds. Uh, we got Remy, we got uh, Kiora, uh, Shivani, and Phoenix, uh, which is very strong in the case of uh, incubators. Then in the case of implants, uh, for cardiac implants, we've got uh, SMT and Merrill. In the case of intraocular implants, we have the leading suppliers from Upper Swami and Auto Labs. And in the case of orthopedic implants, we have repeated manufacturers like BioRad and Pitcon. In diagnostics, uh, which I'm sure because of COVID, many people in Kenya will be interested. Uh, the leading manufacturers are Transasia, uh, Trivitron, uh, Merrill, uh, Agape, and Mitra Industries. And in surgical instrumentation, uh, we've got in the electrical instrumentation like uh, uh, Cautery Products, uh, Island uh, Electronics, and uh, ASCO, uh, HMD for surgical blades, uh, quality needles for making the switcher needles, and endoscope technologies for the endoscope uh, and arthroscopic uh, production instruments. So in the case of exports, it has been doing reasonably well. Uh, our exports are growing at a very decent pace of 10 to 15% year on year. And many manufacturers in, in fact are focusing uh, more on the export market internationally, especially uh, Europe, Middle East and Africa. So you can see the bulk of the exports are in the electronics and equipments, nearly out of the $2.15 billion uh, nearly 43% are electronics and equipments. And then consumables and disposables uh, are uh, the number two after that at 18% and 28% you can see. And then we've got the implants, we've got the instruments, and we've got the uh, uh, IVD reagents, which are relatively small in the, in the basket of exports. But we expect that this basket is going to rapidly uh, grow now in COVID times. So in India, we've been taking many steps to make uh, the quality of the products uh, robust and to have international reputation and local innovation. So we formed the Kalam Institute of Healthcare Technology at Vishakhapatnam. Uh, the role of this institute is to provide linkages between the various scientific institutes and the engineering colleges of India, the biomedical colleges of India, and the manufacturers uh, to commercialize various technologies and to help uh, bring out uh, e options so that these technologies and patents can be commercialized so people can gain from the innovative healthcare. 
they also support in terms of uh, uh, having uh, uh, HTA, the health technology assessments, so that various innovations which designers think can be useful are validated for the usefulness. Then along with the Quality Council of India, we got the Indian certification for medical devices. Uh, so manufacturers in uh, uh, India who have that uh, can be an assurance to the buyers in Kenya, Tanzania, and Eastern Africa that they are quality products and can be relied upon for the credibility. In India now, uh, most of the devices are now regulated under the medical device rules under the Drugs Act. And uh, currently, about 23 of them are uh, have been regulated until last year. But from this year, all the devices are being regulated on a voluntary basis until next year. And thereafter, there'll be mandatory licenses. We've also been trying to make sure that along with quality, uh, the product should be affordable and should be sold with ethical marketing. So the government has taken steps that the prices should be capped on stands and the implants. And maybe there's something that even East Africa can look at uh, as a modus operandi uh, to ensure that patients have access to affordable products. So uh, to specialize in various medical technologies, there are two medical device parks which have been established at Vishakhapatnam and Hyderabad. And nearly six to eight more are coming up in the next one to two years um, in uh, Delhi Noida area, in Karnal area for surgical instruments. Uh, Noida will be for uh, electronics in the uh, uh, Chennai area for instrumentation, in Kerala for the rubber products, and uh, also the state of uh, uh, Karnataka in Bangalore or in uh, Gujarat. Uh, and Maharashtra are very keen to also establish medical device parts, also in much Pradesh. Then to make sure that whatever is being exported or sold in the country is going to be supported, uh, we have the Biomedical Skill Development Consortium, which is now being graduated to a Biomedical Skill Development Council. So that was initially mapping the competency of the biomedical technicians and engineers. And now we also help them to uh, develop new technological skills. So I would recommend that uh, the technicians who are there in Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania, they can reach out to the Indian Biomedical Skill Development Council. If this is an online uh, competency mapping uh, program, there are uh, a number of modules, I think more than 14 modules where you can get your test at, and then you can subsequently uh, apply for getting training uh, through the council for developing skills. So in COVID times, uh, the Indians already are doing that. There are no boundaries when it comes to uh, reaching out by online education. So our friends in Africa can also gain from this. This will help you to get more skills and knowledge. So in COVID times, when the whole world has been completely been are shutting down because of lockdowns and imports have been disrupted, uh, including India. It has been a headache for most of the countries to access uh, devices or at reasonable prices from pretty much sole suppliers, for example, in China. So now the option for many of the countries is to also look at India as an alternative supply basket. We've done very well in these product lines, uh, which you can see over here at the graphs. So in the case of uh, uh, surgical gloves, uh, we have got more than 27 manufacturers, uh, which provide more than uh, uh, 2.5 billion gloves in a year. In the case of uh, PPE coveralls, uh, we hardly had 20 manufacturers before, and the ones listed with the IBED are now currently more than 150. In the case of the government, there are more nearly 800 manufacturers, uh, quite a lot of them will find in the exhibition alongside and the uh, country manufacturers currently uh, more than 25 crore uh, uh, PPE coveralls. Uh, ventilators is again something which we have done very well. Uh, so you can be assured of quantity and quality over here. Uh, from hardly eight manufacturers making more than 3000 ventilators per year. Now we've got more than 18 manufacturers uh, making more than 400,000 ventilators per year. 
In fact, uh, uh, last year uh, capacity, last month's capacity went up to as high as 50,000 ventilators uh, in a month. Uh, similarly, for sanitizers, there is a huge capacity and number of manufacturers available. So you can reach out to them for seeking distribution. And then we have, uh, in the case of uh, uh, surgical masks and N95 masks, a host of manufacturers. In IMED alone, we've got more than 70 manufacturers for surgical masks and more than 40 manufacturers for N95 masks, uh, making more than 3 billion surgical masks and more than uh, uh, 80, uh, 800 million uh, N95 masks per year. COVID testing is very important, and I understand uh, that Eastern Africa has been uh, spared of the big devastation. There are some infections, but not so as high as in Europe or in India, for example, or in America. And the death, death rate is low. So thankful for that. We hear uh, this uh, uh, good news that uh, the immunity in East Africa is keeping you away from uh, uh, high fatality rate. But at the same time, testing, we understand, is low because there is low access to testing. So this is something you can reach out to now many manufacturers in India. There are 16 manufacturers in India to make RNA expression kits and eight manufacturers for making the RT-PCR kits. And we can supply and uh, manufacture and export more than 150 crores of uh, the PCR kits. Uh, for the uh, rapid diagnostic kits, Similarly, we got now about five manufacturers for the rapid diagnostics and for the VTM tubes uh, for doing the sample collection and the swabs, uh, we've got more than 10 manufacturers who can supply you uh, more than 20, uh, uh, more than 200 crore uh, pieces of VTM tubes. So many of the manufacturers are having uh, the ICMET certification or the C certification. Uh, some of the manufacturers also have used FDA certification. But I would uh, recommend to all the importers when you are uh, negotiating or dealing with the Indian manufacturers or even Chinese manufacturers or other suppliers, you must make sure that what certificates they are showing to you are authenticated. So uh, unfortunately, uh, the market has been uh, spoiled by many uh, unethical players who are uh, demonstrating uh, or trying to show their for quality products by showing fake certificates of C marking or fake uh, ISO 1345 certificates or unauthenticated certificates. So it's important to seek uh, certificates which have got accredited by the International Accreditation Forum or by NAPCB or by a national accreditation body which has been recognized by the IAM. And similarly for the C marking, you must make sure that the notified body is listed on the uh, NANDO website of Europe. Similarly, for US FDA, US FDA does not issue any certificates. So, if anybody shows you a fancy certificate, uh, be warned and be cautioned about that. Just a simple US FDA 510K uh, number needs to be Googled, and immediately you will be able to find out who the manufacturer is to know that it's an authentic uh, supplier or not. So, from our end, now that India is known for a technology and uh, engineering uh, prowess, uh, we are expanding further and we are inviting more investors so you can be assured in coming years there will be more such technology manufacturers from uh, Europe and Japan or Korea who will be locating to India and then you can use their factories in India uh, to import into uh, Kenya. Also you can similarly try to replicate what India has done and reach out to Indian manufacturers and seek collaborations and joint ventures uh, to make these products for Eastern African market over there. So one thing which is very important for Kenya to realize is to follow Tanzania and what we've done in India, that to have uh, separate regulations for medical devices uh, separate from pharmaceuticals. So uh, the Korean standards uh, are definitely a good starting point which you have been focusing upon, but it's time to move on from product standards which are basically quality control uh, to go forward to regulatory patient safety and preventive healthcare controls. So the right regulations can help you in that, uh, which you can learn from Tan uh, Tanzania and WHO. So best is to do what is the right way. Thank you very much. And we look forward to working with our friends in East Africa for delivering uh, products to address your patient safety issues and your 
access to affordable quality. For reaching out to any Indian manufacturer for any kind of product or technology, feel free to email to us and we'll provide the bridge role for reaching out to the number of manufacturers for any product line that you want to see from us. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mr. Nath. Uh, the information through your presentation will give direction to the dreams of entrepreneurs in India and Kenya in establishing better businesses and provide benefit to the community at large. I've seen I made uh, work for a long time and work very closely with uh, the entrepreneurs of India. And I'm sure anyone uh, needing any help from Kenya in establishing contacts, I made can be of great help. Thank you very much uh, for being with us here. Uh, I would now invite Dr. Eric Ruto, the Vice President, Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industry to give his address. Dr. Ruto is the chairman of the real group of hospitals and clinics and has over 15 years of experience in the healthcare sector and he invests in fostering economic empowerment in the community. Apart from the Kenya National Chamber, he is also very active with other medical sector organizations and various government boards in Kenya. Mr. Ruto, please. Dr. Ruto, can, can the back of his team unmute Dr. Ruto, please? Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Joshi. And uh, thank you very much, uh, the organizers, for this uh, Meditech uh, exhibition. I'm indeed happy and honored uh, today to participate in this uh, uh, virtual exhibition and webinar. And as you rightly introduced, uh, I'm Dr. Ruto K. Eric. I'm the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industries, uh, Chamber Vice uh, uh, President. Uh, equally, also, I run my business. I'm the chairman of Real Group of Hospitals. Uh, hospitals are spread in the northern side of the country and one facility in the capital city, uh, Nairobi. Uh, today, as a, in the industry uh, leaders in the medical field, and as the chair of the Health Committee of Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industries, uh, we want to present the opportunities that are available in the East African uh, region. Uh, but before I proceed on that, uh, definitely as one of our panelists, I'd uh, recognize our frontline health workers. As we know worldwide, we are dealing with almost uh, 27 million uh, cases of COVID-19. Uh, Kenya, we are around 35,000. And I was checking early in the morning, India uh, has around 4.2 million cases. So therefore, in this era of uh, COVID-19 pandemic, we've seen uh, the world has become much more closer and we have to be much more innovative. Uh, I would like to state that uh, Kenya and India, the association has gone a very long way. And I think it started before Kenya uh, got independence. And in the medical field, we have a very strong uh, relationship uh, between India and Kenya. The opportunities that are available uh, for uh, medical manufacturers and service providers in the East African region are huge. Our population in this region is approximately 170 million. We have an economic uh, body called the East African community, whereby we have common tariffs across the borders, and uh, we enjoy a GDP of approximately 200 billion. Uh, Kenya being almost like 45% of the economy of East African countries. Uh, two years ago, Kenya, we signed a special status agreement with Ethiopia with another population of 100 million. So therefore combined in the East African region, uh, the Indian products can be able to access a market of approximately 270 million uh, people. And as a Kenya, we have a very nice distribution channel and we are ready to partner with Indian uh, companies. Uh, the role of Kenya National Chamber of Commerce is definitely to lobby for businesses between, uh, within the country and between countries. And therefore we are happy to provide any networking opportunities that you require as, uh, as a, the, the manufacturers and the exhibitors who are here. More so in terms of developing markets for the products, doing joint ventures as mentioned, and Definitely, we shall be very much interested uh, to see how we can be able to do, do joint ventures for developing local capacity, especially in terms of uh, manufacturing. Uh, coming closer to now the economy of the medical products and in the medical field, 
Uh, the opportunity is, uh, is uh, in terms of pharmaceutical products. We uh, do a turnover of approximately 300 billion or 3 billion US dollars for pharmaceutical and pharma. And for non-pharmaceutical and surgicals is almost the same at uh, 3 billion US dollars uh, per year in the East African uh, community region. Uh, therefore, these are the opportunities for manufacturers uh, who can be able to come and uh, set up distribution channels, uh, definitely in partnership with the local uh, uh, partners who have established businesses uh, in this area. And as Kenya National Chamber of Commerce, we definitely are willing to participate in this, uh, in this area. Uh, in the private uh, healthcare services, we enjoy, uh, especially in Kenya, an economy of approximately 1.2 billion uh, in terms of turnover in the uh, private healthcare services. Uh, therefore, uh, we have a protocol in the East African region, and we started in 2017, which should run for 10 years until 2027, to see how we can increase our local content and local manufacturing of uh, pharma and medicines in the East African region. And this uh, program, as, uh, and I think one of our panelists has said, there is an establishment of a common accreditation body within the region. And therefore, I urge uh, investors who are in this panel and the manufacturers and their representatives to be able to look at this document and see some of the incentives that have been put by the uh, East African uh, economic uh, region. Uh, in addition to this, uh, definitely, we are inputting approximately 7% of uh, the farmer and another 80% of non farmer are from various parts of the world. I'm happy to report, which is, I think is a good statement uh, being organized by the Indian, that we approximately import 60% of our pharmaceuticals from the India, from India. And therefore, I would urge uh, the investors in this area to see how we can be able to reduce and be able to do joint ventures in terms of starting uh, manufacturing units here in Kenya for purposes of supplying the whole of uh, Africa region. And as I mentioned, uh, Africa, we have signed uh, an African free continental trade area, which is an access of 54 countries and a population of 1.2 billion. And Kenya stands at one of the best uh, places for Indian companies which are established to be able to come and establish their units uh, in this region. I will be happy to do business development as a Kenya National Chamber and as practitioners in the medical field to see how we can be able uh, to establish uh, those companies so that they can take advantages of the African Free Continental Trade Area, which was supposed to come into effect on the 1st of July this year. But because of COVID-19, it has been postponed to early uh, next year. And I would like to say that uh, the early bird catches a the worm. These are the opportunities that we would like uh, to partner. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the local companies who are doing manufacturing are getting their active pharmaceutical ingredients uh, outside uh, from uh, this region. And uh, I want to report that we don't have, especially on the active pharmaceutical ingredients, we don't have companies which are manufacturing locally. So that's another uh, big opportunity uh, for a company that can be able to establish itself uh, locally here. And of course, in the whole of value chain, from distribution, establishing of markets within the region, we'd definitely be happy to partner with that. And I would like to affirm uh, my, uh, my immediate presenter who talked about, they are looking at 200 joint ventures in the whole world within, between the Indian companies. So I would invite them uh, so that we can be able uh, to communicate. Uh, in the other field that uh, I would like uh, us, uh, Kenya and India to partner is in the field of the service industry. Uh, we know there has been uh, quite a number of uh, medical tourism uh, from Kenya to India. Uh, we would like uh, to partner in terms of establishing uh, diagnostic facilities locally, uh, establishing affordable uh, services locally in the East African region. And this is another opportunity we'd like uh, to invite a uh, partner so that we can do joint ventures. And equally, of course, and I'm happy that you are offering training for biomedical engineers. I would like to report that quite a number of uh, Kenyan doctors uh, recently have had a super specialized training in India, and uh, we'd like to appreciate that, and we'd like to see how we can increase uh, this kind of capacity building uh, in this medical field, both in the service industry and in the biomedical engineering in terms of making sure that we are able to maintain our quality uh, equipment. 
Uh, what I would like to report that in the East African region, we are now on almost on a third phase in terms of development of health facilities. And there has been a huge rapid development in the last uh, 10 years in terms of healthcare facilities, uh, building hospitals for international standards. So for any company that has a lot of experience in terms of design, planning, finance, and construction, and uh, a consultancy on operation of hospitals, this is a huge opportunity that we invite uh, Indian specialists because, because definitely India has been able to achieve uh, this aspect and be able to offer a high quality affordable services. This is an area whereby as a private sector in Kenya, we want to see how we can be able to bring services to uh, uh, affordable costs and accessible uh, to the citizens uh, of uh, this region. And we are learning from India in terms of affordability of medical services. So this is an area whereby we invite consultants so that we can be able to do joint ventures, we can be able to do joint proposals uh, to see how we can be able to partner in this, uh, in this area. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. And if you want to get us as Kenya National Chamber of Commerce, uh, you can go to our website, which I will be able to post. It is www.kenyachamber.or.ke. Thank you very much, uh, our moderator, uh, Joshi Damendra. Thank you. Mr. Joshi, can you unmute yourself? Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Ruto. Your words of wisdom shall provide the much needed motivation for the entrepreneurs of both the countries to build sustainable businesses between the countries. And we look forward to working a lot closer with people in Kenya in the field of uh, medical uh, and health healthcare sectors. Uh, I now request uh, Dr. Elizabeth Gitau to address the webinar. Dr. Gitau is the Chief Executive Officer of the Kenya Medical Association. She has served as a lecturer in the leading medical college in Kenya, the Kenya Medical Training College. She has an MBA in healthcare management and has served previously in various capacities within the Kenya Medical Association. She has also been involved in championing the corporate wellness in Kenya. Dr. Elizabeth Gitau, please. Back office, can you please unmute Dr. Gitau? I understand Dr. Mercy has just entered and uh, we welcome you. I will just come back to you immediately after Dr. Gitau uh, finishes her speech. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Yeah. I hope you can hear me. Yes. I thank you very much for this invitation. It was an honor to participate in this virtual exhibition. And it is also great to see the collaboration between India and Kenya, which has been ongoing for a long time. And the Kenya Medical Association, which I represent, has had a lot of engagement with the India medical sector with various partners in the hospital, in the pharma industry, and we have hosted a lot of exhibitions here in Kenya with collaboration with our Indian partners. I would uh, like to introduce my medical association once again. Uh, Kenya Medical Association is a national association of medical doctors uh, representing over 9,000 medical doctors in Kenya uh, who work both in private sector and in, pri and in public sector. So our, um, in terms of our representation, it runs, it runs, um, it runs fully uh, across the medical sector. Um, I was asked today to speak about growth and potential of healthcare services in Africa with a key focus in Kenya. As has been mentioned before uh, during this, uh, uh, during this um, exhibition is that uh, in terms of the population of Africa and the population of Kenya, it's a growing population with a lot of youth and a lot of uh, potential in terms of uh, economic growth and with economic growth um, 
healthcare services in Kenya have been improving. We have been seeing a lot of improvement in terms of investment in the health sector. Um, for a long time, we've had a lot of um, collaboration, especially the medical industry in India, with sending patients to India. But as things go, uh, or as things improve in Africa, as the economic growth in, uh, improves, um, slightly probably reduced by COVID-19, but we were on a trajectory to actually uh, have a lot of um, medical hubs here in Kenya, serving even the whole of the East Africa community. And we've had uh, some, of our, some of our specialists being trained in India. And once they come back, they're able actually to serve to serve the patients and improve the healthcare sector. And this brings demand in terms of medical devices. Um, we've improved uh, technology and we've improved um, medical care and improved quality of care. It actually now demands a lot of improvement in terms of the quality of the medical devices that you have in Kenya, improvement in terms of uh, manufacturing for the pharmaceutical industry. So I do believe that um, with the kind of collaboration we've had in terms of one is in terms of investment, two is in terms of mentorship, because India is a big uh, medical market. And uh, as such, I do believe that that with the kind of I do mentorship that you will get from your office and the kind of collaboration with business partnering that we are able to grow the African medical market to a, to a world class medical market. And there's huge, huge potential. Um, one thing I would want to mention is that in, in the Kenyan industry, is that 40%, close to 50% of the healthcare service provision is actually done by the private sector. This is a very big percentage of uh, Kenyans who are actually um, buying capacity or ability to pay for medical care is actually improving. And we also, another thing is that the only challenge that in Africa that we have faced mostly is about insurance of, insurance of patients. Our patients, uh, like in Kenya, we have about only 20% of Kenyans under medical insurance, which actually brings down potential to access medical care. But this has been uh, addressed by the government, and there's a lot of effort that is being brought in to ensure that there's a bit, uh, the health financing aspect is actually um, sorted out. We have a sort of um, medical insurance, and with medical insurance, it will increase the ability of access to uh, medical care. And with increased access, for sure, we, we will see improvement in terms of the number of uh, facilities. We'll see a lot of improvement in terms of quality of care that we actually get here as a country. So uh, I do believe that even during this exhibition, the participants that you will get um, looking, through the, looking through your products, it, it will be a relationship that will form into the future, that even as Kenya grows, as Kenya grows to get, uh, to get better quality healthcare, that we shall be getting more and, um, shall be getting more and more business partnering with the Indian community. Um, the other thing I would uh, possibly want to address is in terms of quality of care. Uh, for a long time, um, the major focus in Africa was about access. And uh, not, a lot of, not a lot of effort was put in, in terms of quality, um, quality health provision or in terms of quality assessment. But we have seen a lot of improvement in terms of quality assessment of um, quality assessment uh, uh, in terms of uh, hospitals being GCI accredited. Mm -hmm. We have safe care here. And we also have the Ministry of Health, which has come up with the Kenya Quality Management or Management of Health, KQMH, which is actually supposed to help facilities improve quality of care. And part of improvement of quality of care is in terms of provision of technology that is able to sort out the patient. Um, so, and this comes uh, with a lot of collaborations with other global partners to be able to achieve this. So um, Kenya is on a trajectory in terms of the opportunities, in terms of improvement of care and improvement of access. Uh, to not belabor the point, possibly the other thing I would also want to bring about is in terms of the effect of COVID. The effect of COVID on our on on the on a global scale and also in terms of Africa, COVID has given us an opportunity to actually look through what we suffer from internally. Before COVID, it was very easy to actually uh, transfer patients to other countries whose medical tourism industry was actually bigger. It was possible to refer patients outside, but with COVID nineteen, the challenge comes in 
an opportunity for Africa to build back better, an opportunity for Kenya to build back better. And with building back, it means that the healthcare system needs to have enough capacity to take care of our patients internally. So in terms of even investment, in terms of the collaborations, collaborations now need to become uh, in a way that we improve the investments internally so that we are able to take care of our patients because as it is right now, it is almost impossible to get a patient outside the country. So of course, um, in, a, in a crisis, we take opportunities to take advantage of the crisis and make sure that in future that we shall be able to uh, take care of our patients in a better way. So from Kenya... A medical association to ensure quality health for, for quality health for our patients, and such. We appreciate the association. We appreciate the uh, collaboration we had with the Indian Hospital, the India Technology Farm, and we look forward to a one-on-one -on -one exhibition once convenient. Thank you so much for the invitation and I'll be here listening in case there are any questions. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you very much, Dr. Gitao, for your talk. Uh, uh, we will seek your support in the coming times to establish more collaborations between Indian and Kenyan businessmen in the field of medical health care. Uh, friends, uh, it is a privilege for us uh, that uh, Dr. Mercy Mugangi has joined us. And, uh, you know, as uh, I was informing earlier, she is the Chief Administrative Officer, Ministry of Health, Kenya. She's a medical doctor with a Bachelor's in Medicine and a Bachelor of Surgery from the Nairobi University. And later, she earned a Master's degree in Health Economics and Policy from the University of Adelaide, Australia. She has served her country as medical doctor and later within the Ministry of Health Kenya in various positions before being appointed as the Chief Administrative Secretary in the Ministry of Health. May I request Ms. Mercy Mugangi, the Chief Administrative Officer, Ministry of Health Kenya, to give us her inaugural address, please. Back office, please unmute. Dr. Mercy, please. Dr. Mercy, may I request? May I request Dr. Mercy to give her inaugural speech, please? Is that Martin? Let me <clears throat> go to next speaker, I think. I think he's confirming. Dr. Sambuva is speaking on, uh, on his behalf. Call Dr. Sambuva to speak uh, on her behalf. Let because she's already speaker, on another meeting. Okay. Uh, Fine. Just call. Dr. Sambuva is logged in. She can, he can hear you. Hello? 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 Anyway, I, I think he's asking someone else to speak on our behalf. Uh, Hello? Yeah, Mr. Mercy is joining, my friend. My friend, Dr. Mercy is joining. Can we go to the next speaker, please, Mr. Joshi? Yeah, I will. Sure. So, uh, uh, let us wait for her. Uh, once her uh, message comes, we'll, we'll, we'll speak. So we also have with us uh, no, no, Mahesh no, Desai. No, 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 no. Can you please unmute, uh, 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 unmute this uh, voice to speak? Them speak. Back office? Yeah, yeah. Just tell them that, uh, uh, to call Dr. Mbuba. I gave them the window. 
and they took too long. Yes, sir, can you it mute? Can you mute? Yes, sir. 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 He founded the Mira Group in 1967, and in the last 45 years, he has exported Mira perms to more than 50 countries. He is associated with a number of trade and export promotion organizations at the national and international level. Has provided great services in standardization of hand perms, even operated by the solar power, especially focusing on rural and tribal areas. he has worked on the research and development projects in sweden and switzerland and worked in projects under undp unicef world bank asian development african development bank european funds japanese funds and indian countries funds he is a recipient of 24 national and international awards the notable few being the first entrepreneur udyog patra award from the hands of the vice president of india and the best marketing national award from the finance minister of india at present he is very active in the field of skill development and technology upgradation in the msme sector with special focus on value addition for the products in the international market it is our privilege that we have mr desai with us and i request him to make his presentation please back office may i request you to please unmute mr desai and request mr desai to go ahead with his presentation Thank you, Mr. Ja Joshi. <coughs> Dr. Marcy Mwangi, Deputy Minister, Ministry of Health, Kenya. Dr. Elizabeth Gitau, CEO, Kenya Medical Association. Dr. Eric Ruto, Vice President, Kenyan National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Mr. Rajiv Nath, Forum Coordinator, AIMED, Mr. Pandya, Mr. Joshi, Mr. Ravi Srivastav, Mr. Sanyal Desai, and participants. At the outset, let me congratulate the organizer. for selecting and choosing the app appropriate and the right topics for today's world after covid or during the covid we all have become health conscious every one of us so it's the right time to cooperate i will be talking about the cooperation between india and east africa now good morning for friends from kenya and good afternoon for friends in india and i heartily welcome you all and thank you imdi 2020 to have invited me to this important uh, platform india today's topic in cooperation between india and africa in the field of medical devices a reliable source of medical devices products and technologies for africa my predecessor mr nath has covered the entire length breadth with lot of depth about the medical devices feel in india and how they can cooperate with private sector as well as public sector in east africa india and africa share a rich heritage of culture diversity and contribution to the international trade since the time immemorial today the two land masses borders the most important and fastest growing economic region surrounding the indian ocean 
and both the regions are among the fastest growing economy of the world as both the african and indian economies have been largely emerging from similar trajectories both share many similar healthcare priorities such as elimination of communicable diseases by making available quality and affordable health facilities to target such diseases india has a rich experience to share in re reducing the incidences of communicable diseases over the last few decades it focused on setting up remote healthcare delivery infrastructure investing in research and development of affordable medicines and vaccines besides the healthcare equipments and medical devices to serve the remote areas of low income population and settlements scattered all over the interiors of the country over the years india built strong fundamentals supported by strong manufacturing ecosystem due to which indian medical devices sector was declared sunrise sector in 2014 along with the launch of make in india campaign the sector has been able to completely transform itself in terms of both quality and capability to manufacture range of high end medical devices at very highly competitive and affordable prices epc india as a nodal body under the ministry of commerce and industry government of india is working towards the promotion of trade and investments in the engineering sector also launched a brand india engineering initiative for medical devices sector the objective of the initiative was to showcase india's quality manufacturing technology and innovations which meets the global quality standards epc india has been at the forefront in bridging indian medical device sector with major markets across the world over the years it has also created a platform for bridging industry with research and development with the support and in conjunction with academia universities and in identifying technology gaps and <coughs> encouraging possible interventions with the government fundings and i would like to hear state that all the 42 csir that is council of scientific and industrial research under government of india scientific research department are collaborating in this effort we work with them with also iits and also aims and also the councils in india with the involvement of private sector not only large sector but also we involve msme in this endeavor the indian medical devices industry is currently valued at around united states dollar 6 billion is expected to grow approximately 15% in medium term the overall healthcare industry 
in India is valued at US dollar 145 billion. This was in 2018, which is expected to reach United States dollar 280 billion by the year 2025. The Indian surgical equipment, medical devices, and pharmaceutical ministry and machinery industry is fragmented with close to 1,800 domestic firms who are predominantly MSMEs. Primarily, they are manufacturing the product range of low to medium technology products. Thereby, they offer themselves as a cost-effective suppliers and recent years, their focus has also been significantly shifting towards cost-effective high-end products, including high-tech with R&D and testing in the sector with AI on international certification and testing. India has made some recent technological achievements in cancer care, cardiovascular, MRI, diagnostics, and imaging, dialysis, IoT, integrated in diabetic care, besides setting up of one of the largest 3D printing facility for biomedical implants. India has steadily built capabilities in designing, development, and supply of vast range of electromechanical, diagnostic, therapeutic, and implantable devices, also confirming to international quality requirement and standards. Recently, India also led in development of several low-cost and cutting-edge healthcare solutions. Such innovations can also be useful for healthcare delivery in Africa. Over the years, leading global companies of medical devices have established in India setting up their manufacturing base by either setting up facilities of their own or by entering joint ventures such as by 3Ms, Pecton, Dickinson, Hollister, Philips Medical Services. Incidentally, our Indian industry is also looking forward to have tie up with their African counterpart so that they can also transfer the knowledge and also help in the, bio, in the medical care uh, sector of Africa. Today, health sector is fast getting introduced with many disruptive technologies like robotics, artificial intelligence, internet of things, teleradiology, and 3D printing, and many more. It is said that in today's world, technology changes every two to three years, which used to be in earlier years, five to 10 years. So we all have to be ready for a swift change in our own field. These disruptions are making possible the delivery of top class affordable medical facilities to people in terms of diagnostic equipment, imaging, and telemedicine, etc. It is, and India is increasingly leveraging its expertise in IT sector to boost 
innovation in the health care delivery by doing r and d with our it industry and iot telecommunication and broadband communication is also making medical expertise rich on underserved rural locations far flung in country through telemedicine and teleconsulting programs delivered over mobile phones like india many african nations are also known to be developing their expertise in information technologies and improvising their innovation ecosystem thus india and africa can look forward for partnerships to offer innovative solutions for implementing healthcare delivery services these innovations and technologies are big potential segment for widening the scope of increasing low cost and affordable partnerships in near future already today's india has been exporting medical devices and other healthcare products to over 58 countries between 2017 and 2019 the exports of medical devices grew over 25% reaching over 171 million the top markets includes south africa nigeria egypt kenya and ethiopia this top 5 countries in africa constitutes over 45% of total exports to that continent among the various africa re african regions the exports are mostly to north africa western africa eastern africa and of course we have to do a lot to improve our presence in central africa today healthcare sector is at the front line due to the covid-19 pandemic india like rest of the nations faces the herculean task of overcoming the pandemic india like african nations the population is vastly distributed among the lower middle income category across the geography in such an unprecedented situation india is managing the spread by revamping the healthcare and medical devices ecosystem as a result it made several notable transformations over the past few months alone the concept of manufacturing personal protection equipment for our pandemic warriors was non existent 4 months ago in india ppe production was minuscule in india which was largely dependent on china for imports the problem was solved with the help of government support and reforms india's private industry research and development centers all collaborating all on the same plane and implementing frugal innovation to help the textile industry meet the safety standards set by the who guidelines and produce ppp ppe equipment thus a new industry was born and more important 
India today is the world's second largest PPE producer in a span of five months. India and Africa today has much to learn from each other and look ahead for making trade partnerships meaningful and strong enough to overcome any challenges of future. It must be a win-win situation for both the parties. I thank the Ministry of Health, Kenya, Association of Indian Medical Devices, Industry, AIMED, Medical Association of Tanzania, Critical Care Society of Kenya, and National Health Agency, Government of India, are supporting these webinars for organizing this valuable platform. My kudos and once again, congratulations to the organizations. It would indeed help in creating better understanding of two great potential partnership in healthcare and medical devices sector. Thank you once again for giving me this opportunity. Wish you all the best. Thank you very much, Mr. Desai. Uh, your talk exudes all the wisdom that you have gathered from your immense experience of working with various countries. It was very inspirational to hear you. We will uh, be requiring a lot of your help when a lot of other our new entrepreneurs uh, get ready to work with uh, different countries from India. And your experience will definitely help them uh, establish their businesses. You are always, uh, you're always welcome to EPC. And thank you. To me also. Thank you. Thank you. Friends, uh, uh, in place of uh, Dr. Mercy, we have from her office uh, Mr. Mr. Mabua, and uh, he is going to address her on behalf of uh, Dr. Mercy. So uh, I request our uh, back office people to please unmute. Mr. J. Mabua, so that uh, he can give the address on behalf of Dr. Mercy, please. His video is on, but his voice is not coming. I think he needs to unmute. Yes, now he's there. Fine. Thank you, Master of Ceremony. Mr. Mabua, can you adjust your uh, screen? We cannot see your face. We can only see you uh, up to your specs. So what 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 do I do so that you can see me in full? I think, I think you need to adjust the screen or the camera if it is possible. How is that? Is that okay? If you can uh, better better than earlier. Yes. If you can go a little behind also. Uh, yeah, or you can go a little backwards. No, I don't think so. That will work. That will work. Yeah, better than earlier. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, um, uh, now this is uh, Mr. Damendra. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, my name is uh, Dr. Joseph Atimbuva. I will be making some remarks on behalf of our Chief Administrative Secretary, Dr. Masi Mwangangi who had uh, joined in, in this meeting, uh, but due to uh, some other engagements, she had to follow uh, to attend to other engagements. Um, uh, uh, I am the head of uh, health products and uh, technologies in the, in, the, in the ministry. And, uh, and um, therefore I am uh, glad and delighted uh, to participate in this uh, meeting uh, to make the remarks 
on behalf of the CAS. Let me uh, uh, recognize the participation of, uh, of um, the, ch the chairman of the EEPC India, also the participation of uh, the vice president of Kenya, of the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, uh, and the other dignitaries uh, who are uh, locked in this morning for this uh, meeting. Uh, let me say good morning, everybody. Uh, on behalf of the Minister of Health, let me say that uh, we are actually uh, very much uh, delighted to participate in this meeting, uh, which is supposed to look at um, uh, something like the role of medical products in healthcare, uh, or rather the, as the association of medical products and healthcare. And uh, 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 through the remarks which I, I want to make on behalf of the ministry and on the CAS, I will prefer actually to use the confectional terminologies of uh, healthy products and technologies as opposed to uh, medical uh, and, uh, and epidemic uh, products. Uh, uh, we all know that uh, healthy products and technologies includes uh, medicines and or drugs because the, those terminologies are used interchangeably. They also include uh, non-medicine uh, medical supplies or products, uh, the surgicals, the medical supplies, whether in the area of environmental and the rest. They include dental supplies, radiological supplies, nutritional products, diagnostic uh, uh, supplies, environmental healthy supplies, medical equipment, uh, both minor and uh, major. Uh, and uh, that all these healthy products and technologies are uh, crucial uh, for provision of quality health care, including the management and the control of any epidemic or pandemic, like the current one, uh, of uh, COVID-19, which we are all uh, battling with uh, globally. Uh, in fact, let me say that there are very few aspects of healthcare which do not entail use of health products and technologies. That is, products and technologies are widely used uh, to meet the needs of healthcare. This therefore makes access to healthy products and technologies and especially for the category of uh, HPTs classified as essential, a basic human right. Here in Kenya, for example, our constitution of uh, 2010 that is the Kenya Constitution of 2010, provides for the right to the highest possible standards of health, health, including reproductive health, for the Kenyan citizens. And uh, that health care, which is envisaged by our Constitution, is not attainable without uh, a very good system of uh, providing uh, HPTs. And uh, similarly, uh, in line with our constitution, our healthy policy framework, which, is, which was developed after the constitution, because it is of 2014 to 2030, it was developed in line with the goal of the constitution, or it was rather, it was developed uh, to address the health issues and visage in the constitution. And therefore the goal of the health policy was meant and is uh, attaining the highest possible standard of health in a responsive manner. 
the health, the health policy identifies investment in the area of HPTs as one of the eight investment areas for attaining the health policy goal. Therefore, the provision of, uh, of uh, HPTs uh, is uh, by extension uh, also implied in our constitution. On the other hand, we have a universal health, uh, we have a universal health uh, coverage program where, with an agenda with an, uh, which, is a, which is a big agenda item uh, of the current government because the current government has uh, four big agenda items and the one of those uh, uh, big four agenda items is the universal health coverage. And that was uh, developed and adopted by the government as a way of achieving the health policy goal. The, our EHC program was pronounced in December 2017 by His Excellency the President with the aim of attaining affordable health care for all Kenyans. Uh, and this is that all people resident in Kenya should have access to health services that are of good quality and without encountering financial hardship. Let me uh, underscore once again that UGC is not achievable without assured provision of quality and cost-effective HPTs. I think with these two or three highlights, I would want to underscore further that the importance of HPTs in healthcare, including in epidemics and, the, and the pandemics, is actually it needs no uh, emphasis. However, both here in Kenya and even globally, it is an established fact that HPTs are expensive and that it is estimated they account for approximately 40% of the inputs for healthcare. And because of the costs associated with HPTs, they are both commercial or economic goods as well as public health goods. And uh, from the costs associated with HPTs and the need for us actually to access them as a as a basic uh, human right, we recognize as a ministry that there are several challenges which you require to contend with. And uh, among the top challenges are one, the budgetary constraints by governments to assure an interrupted supply through the public health network. And because of uh, the cost and the budgetary constraints to most governments, what is widely experienced is that uh, we have uh, frequent stockouts, and especially in public health facilities. And those stockouts definitely do undermine the quality of health care, which is provided to the people. The second aspect is the presence of the phosphide and substandard products in most markets. And this is a, a, as a result of the ragatiers uh, for purposes of uh, profiteering. 
The third challenge is the high prices of uh, HPTs, and uh, more so the new HPTs. And these high prices make HPTs, and more so to emphasize the new ones, almost inaccessible to the majority of the consumers. And those high prices uh, tends to undermine government and other entities' efforts towards improvement of healthcare in a normal epidemic and pandemic uh, situations. And for example, in the area of COVID, which is ravaging us in Gropari today, when uh, COVID started, <clears throat> the most immediate reaction was an upsurge of the prices for PPEs, almost to unreachable levels. It's good that uh, with the time, and especially with uh, more investors moving into the production of PPEs, at least the prices have uh, 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 come down, and we hope that they will continue to go down. So when you look at uh, the, 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 the issue of uh, new, uh, new technologies, in the, especially in the area of management of uh, non-communicable uh, diseases like cancer, we have uh, technologies and the medical products which have proved to be useful, but the prices are just unreachable to the majority of the people who require it. Going forward, there will be need for all stakeholders with leadership from governments to join hands together through the various collaborative mechanisms to address especially these key challenges and even the others, which uh, there are many. And uh, I, will, I, will, I, I will just only highlight the ones which I've highlighted, but there are many others. So there is need actually to have uh, mechanisms to address these challenges uh, because these challenges, they impact negatively on the access of HPTs in all situations. And uh, some of the interventions which we as a, as a Minister of Health and also uh, as, the, as a government would want to see in these areas of the HPTs is giving more attention and the importance of the public health good for HPTs as, a, as opposed to the commercial aspects. This will help lower prices across board as we all, we all agree to shift away from exploitive profits uh, around HPTs. I think in many setups, the commercial aspect or the commercial good of HPTs tend to override the public health aspect. This, this is something we require to seriously and keenly consider because whereas we are a commercial goods, we should be able to exploit the public health goods uh, more as opposed to the commercial aspect. There is also need in the form of interventions 
to increase local production capacities across countries for self-sufficiency. And for this one, the Kenyan government, amongst the big four agendas, one of it being the UHC, the other, the other uh, 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 big four agenda is local production, including of HPTs, uh, for purposes of self-sufficiency uh, and job creation. And uh, therefore, uh, the government of Kenya is willing or has put in place mechanisms to encourage local production of the various goods required. And HPTs is one of those priority goods which the government of Kenya uh, would be willing to go to any length and extent to encourage local investors. And therefore, I take this opportunity to, 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 to encourage the investors from, uh, from India uh, to, to really take this opportunity, prevailing opportunity by the government of Kenya uh, to invest in local production of HPTs in, in, in Kenya. We did a welcome it, and I can assure you the ministry and the government will go to all the extents possible uh, to make sure that we provide the enabling environment for that to be done. Uh, the next other intervention, which is very important, is that of combating uh, trade in, in phosphide and substandard uh, HPTs. Uh, we have uh, our HPTs regulatory bond, that is the Farmers and Poisons Board, but you all know that the issue of uh, trade in phosphide and substandard uh, uh, goods, uh, this is not an issue which can be combated effectively by only one agency. Uh, and uh, therefore, our Farmers and Poisons Board collaborates with other um, government uh, ministries and departments and agencies. And it, should, it also collaborates with the, with the private sector uh, to bring, to try to bring uh, these vices to a bare minimum, even not to eliminate them. And uh, therefore, uh, this is one area where as a uh, uh, we, would, we will still, uh, or we are still open to more collaboration uh, as a ministry and as a government. The other intervention is that of uh, commitment by governments to sustainable financing for, for procurement, supply, and the management of, uh, of HPTs. Um, and uh, this I can assure you, like the Kenyan government through UHC. Uh, it has increased the financing towards HPTs and also even under the prevailing circumstances of uh, COVID, the government is doing its, its best to mobilize resources to ensure that uh, we, the, 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 the levels of access of HPTs uh, to, the, to the Kenyan people is of acceptable uh, standards. And again, uh, just tying in with the issues of costs, the issues of uh, sustainable financing, the government cannot afford not to collaborate with other agencies, development, development partners, the private, uh, to really uh, address the issues of the costs of uh, HPTs. I think, ladies and gentlemen, I, I just want to make uh, these remarks uh, brief. Uh, and um, I want to uh, stop there.
and once again say that we are very happy to be as a ministry uh, to have been invited to participate in this in this meeting and also to be given the opportunity uh, to make uh, these remarks i believe uh, i welcome you uh, the deliberations in terms of the next steps and the way forward uh, which will emanate from this meeting the ministry will be more than willing to engage further uh, so that the action points which are going to be agreed on uh, we shall participate in taking them uh, to the next uh, action level i think with that uh, thank you very much thank you very much Thank you, Mr. Mabua. Thank you for uh, a very, very informative uh, talk. Thanks for highlighting the challenges and limitations in the sector of healthcare in your country and the various initiatives taken by the government to ensure better healthcare facilities for the people of Kenya. The information will help us better understand the situation and collaborate with the Kenyan side in a better way. We will seek your cooperation to a lot of future business opportunities between our countries. Thank you very much. Uh, we shall now have uh, an expert presentation from Mr. Ravi Srivastava, the CEO and director of Omni Lens Private Limited, one of the pioneer companies from India, having a state-of-the-art manufacturing facility, manufacturing wide range of CE certified intraocular lenses, ophthalmic medical devices, and pharmaceutical products. Mr. Srivastav has done his post-graduation in international business management and has an experience of over 36 years in handling sales and marketing functions in the domestic and international businesses with well-established global Western multinational companies and startup companies of repute from India. Currently, he is managing business in over 100 countries and remains focused on global business development as one of the key responsibilities besides strategic planning, identification of new product or markets, and new product development in regulated markets like USA, Latin America, Europe, Japan, Korea, to name a few. May I request Mr. Ravi Srivastava to give his presentation and request the back of his team to please unmute him. Mr. Ravi Srivastava, please. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Joshi. It's, uh, thanks for the introduction. Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, I thank Mr. Pandya. Uh, let me share the screens. Just, just, just. Having some issue? No, no. Uh, it looks it should not be. Yeah. Good point. Okay. So I thank Mr. Pandya for the organizing this webinar and offering the opportunity for sharing my thoughts why India is a reliable source of medical devices for Africa and probably rest of the world uh, uh, all across. I'm also grateful to the dignitaries from Kenya, colleagues, business partners, and friends for attending the webinar. As the, uh, you know, we all are uh, aware that COVID pandemic has swayed across the globe. A lot of people have lost their lives, but thanks to medical fraternities and all the concerned teams for their relentless work in safeguarding us. 
and it is our responsibility to follow the guidelines and stay safe. Trust, soon we shall have vaccine early next year probably, which will help us to get back to the normal situation. Uh, medical devices offer great support and we had been listening from our uh, previous uh, presenters and topic seems interesting to understand how Indian companies are striving in deducing the expectations and offering products of international standard. So just as a brief introduction about the medical devices, we all know that medical devices represent products supporting people in health assessment and management, wellness, fitness, vision, hearing, dental, cosmetics, uh, and many more. Medical devices benefit patients by helping healthcare providers and help patients in improving their quality of life. Along with the benefits, hazards are imminent and hence, uh, it is very important that device should have proven safety. So regulatory authorities, test labs, raw material supplier play a very important role besides manufacturer in receiving the desired quality products. Based on risk, medical devices are classified as class one, class two A, two B and three. So just for the understanding like uh, wheelchair or maybe mask, these are in the class one and coronary stents in, uh, are classified as class three. We also know that medical devices range from low risk, could be tongue depressor, to a high, uh, high risk uh, devices which are embedded, which have embedded software like pacemakers, medical test kits, and various other implants. In, I would say, uh, courtesy to the pharmaceutical development, surgical intervention, we have increased life expectancy. People live over 70 years or more as an average. And because of their longer life, they wish to remain active all the life, even after retirement. They continue reading, working on computer, driving, playing. So there is surge in demand of medical devices. Very especially it could be in the orthopedics, dental, cochlear implants, or in the contract, uh, in the visual activity. So if the person is retired and they are not able to take care of their activities as usual, they would like to go for the implant of intraocular lenses, which will bring back their vision to their expected levels. Medical devices and ingenious industry is creating a paradigm shift in healthcare worldwide. And if you see the astonishing projections are contemplation of innovative devices, wearables, services, epidermal implants, etc., to address lifestyle diseases. And medical device industries aplomb for steady growth of circa $500 billion with the 5% CAGR. By 2025, medical device industry is anticipated to reach circa $600 billion. I recall one of my visit to a company in uh, London several years ago, where I observed that they are manufacturing a small chip and that chip is epidermally implanted and the chip keeps sending the signals through mobile app all the day about the glucose levels. So person is able to monitor their glucose levels and they can take precautions themselves. India is key market uh, supporting industry, uh, key market supporting industry growth are US, Europe, Asia, Middle East, Africa. And recent survey have designated Asia, Africa and Middle East as a high growth driving continents beside USA and Europe. We all understand that, you know, if any country which is on the growth trajectory where people work hard, they strive to acquire knowledge. And uh, they, when they have the uh, better, uh, I would say the liquid cash, they would, the first objective would be how to ensure they are able to enjoy what they could achieve. 
and in order to enjoy what they have achieved over a period of time they would like to ensure they have they are healthy they have good health and they are able to take care of their their requirements professionally or personal in a in a i would say the expected manner so medical devices in the field of uh, vitro diagnostic cardiology diagnostic uh, imaging orthopedics and ophthalmology occupy the top five positions worldwide sales and market share this is something which we have uh, seen that these five sectors are the major contribution of the medical device market globally and besides other industries ophthalmology has offered plethora of benefits very especially improving vision post cataract surgery you might have observed some of the uh, international organizations whether it is rotary or lions club they focus on the development of ophthalmology i remember my visit to uh, nairobi couple of times where i visited the lions hospital and they are focused on improving the vision of uh, people and uh, you know you might have observed that many times it happens in the lower strata of uh, society where the only person could be the earning member of family person could be say i would say uh, a tailor who had been able to take care of the responsibility very well but the suddenly cataract developed is unable to take care of the family uh, all monetary aspects education of children and well being so the moment cataract surgery is done the vision comes back and that is how people are able to take care of their responsibility so this i said for the lower strata of people but cataract surgery is such which would happen eventually to everyone cataract would get developed to everyone it depends or it may vary at what age we at omni lens uh, manufacture wide range of intraocular lenses and related products but the most important thing it's not only focused on high featured products we also manufacture good quality products for every socio economic uh, segment all across the globe here we are talking about africa and uh, a continent with opportunity so uh, with population close to 1 billion gdp approaching circa 1.7 trillion africa present substantial opportunity five of the 12 fastest growing economies are from africa and north african countries i would say especially the egypt nigeria south africa share 50% of economic activities half of the country in africa have already achieved middle income status regional economic forums are created to boost regional integration and economic development rapidly growing middle income group is contributing in growth of healthcare expenditure government local players are setting up new hospitals and health insurance is uh, offering good health and thus inciting growth of medical devices so with all, all these situations are very congenial for country to grow and countrymen to have good health they should focus how to remain healthy and active with cagr uh, with cagr of over 6% medical device market in africa is expected to reach circa usd 7.2 billion but besides the opportunities the africa continent comes with some barriers as well which we need to understand and very especially for the manufacturing companies what would help them to achieve their objective of offering good health to masses over 60% population could still be managing their livelihood at us dollar 2 per day low infrastructure and connectivity is still a limitation in providing good health uh, uh devaluating currencies sometimes unstable political situation or uh, ever changing uh, 
weak management of public health care services, underdeveloped health care system, price sensitive medical device market of African continent. So when we look at all these aspects, it certainly gives a clear signal that there is a lot of opportunity for Indian companies to understand, come forward and see what would help them to expand the business in Africa in a win-win situation. So uh, we need to offer good quality products for masses to support early detection of disease, non-invasive therapy, contract dental and general health care. And why India could be reliable source? Because India is fourth largest in medical device market in Asia after Japan, Korea, and China. And having the business over 10 billion US dollar with a compounded growth, we expected to reach at 50 billion by 2025. India has over 800 medical device manufacturers and Mr. Rajiv Nath presented that through IMED person can get the access to the right manufacturing companies across the medical devices. Government is facilitating ind indigenous production to reduce uh, dependency on import through Atmanirbhar Bharat. New regulatory device rules and regulation processes are in progress to ensure product quality and consistency. Lot of emphasis is given on the MSMEs and they are being encouraged for medical device production to curb reliance on imports and lower the cost. Uh, I heard in the presentation of Mr. Nath that not only four, two of, two of the medical device parks are already active and there are many of them which are in progress, which are in process and would be able to provide all the, all the uh, facilities in, in one premises, including the uh, test facilities. India is poised to offer world-class products at the right price. And why India is a reliable source for medical devices, products, and technology? Besides the strength in the product, besides the focus on products for the masses at the right price, besides following the regulations, the communication is one of the very important supporting factor. A country has everything but the people are not able to communicate effectively or we are not able to understand each other's requirement better, then it could be a big barrier in spite of lot many facilities. So this is one key feature of India. We have developed and growing infrastructure. One of the most reliable and cost effective product and services. Stringent regulations ensure desired product quality and consistency. And Make in India Drive has boosted local production capabilities. So the government, with the efforts of entrepreneurs, government, team, education system, everything is in line to acquire knowledge, which in order to ensure, first, we understand what is required and then we are able to produce what is required by our uh, partner companies and especially in the African continent. During COVID pandemic, within no time, in-house capabilities were accelerated, especially for PPE kits and ventilators. Initially, the product we received or we imported were not meeting the desired quality standard. With the support of government to the right companies, entrepreneurs, everybody came together. And today is the situation that not only India can meet the domestic requirement, but is able to support the requirement of other countries. And the COVID vaccine is underway. Hopefully by early next year, we shall have the good news. Uh, another 
benefit of India as compared to other countries, we have relatively low production cost. So along with all the benefits and low production cost, we are ready to offer uh, cost advantages. With all above and many more, India is indeed a reliable source for medical devices, product and services. I also feel that besides, you know, the companies are doing, we are taking care what is best as, uh, as our understanding, experience, regulator support. But buyers also have the responsibility to identify who, which company could be the right partner. Price is, I feel price is important, though should not be the first and decisive factor Price may not be the best, only looking at the price may not be best for the patient and the healthcare providers. To get the right price, it is important to look for that companies, they have necessary regulatory documents. And if notified body offering C certificate or other approvals, they themselves are also approved by medical council or any other body which is authorized. Manufacturing and quality policies, quality management system, they are well understood and followed. Authenticity of biocompatibility reports of material used. Data on clinical and post-marketing surveillance are genuine and company is practicing on them. Company is committed and follow the timelines. So if buyer also looks at all these plus whatever else they feel would help them to procure the right product would be very important factor. I wish to share when we propose ourselves and why I say that when buyers are, buyers are requested to look into the practices of company, what we do, we follow quality management system, procure material from the best source in world, do pre-purchase audit as per ISO guidelines of all critical and material supplier, a strong quality policies, each and every unit is checked before ship, before they are shipped, in-house lab to test sterility and endotoxin post-sterilization, a strong regulatory team to support product registration, and have collaborated with a GLP certified lab for our biocompatibility test requirements. We are presently doing business in over 100 countries across the globe and objective is to increase our base in many more countries in times to come. But once again, how we can do that, it is always understanding the requirement and working on how we can meet their requirement. Whenever I travel, I try to meet surgeons. I try to see how comfortable they are with our products or competitors' products. Besides ophthalmology, if I get the opportunity, I attend surgeries and other specialties, especially to see how comfortable doctors feel with the products from Indian medical device manufacturers. Thanks a lot for patience hearing. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Srivastava. Uh, it was great. Uh, you shared a lot of information and uh, highlighted the case for India becoming the most reliable supplier of medical devices uh, to Africa. Thank you so much. Your insights uh, will help everyone a lot. Thank you. Uh, friends, uh, fortunately, uh, during the time that uh, uh, we, we all were together, I am happy to announce that We've had 241 live visitors at this moment of time. 105 watching the webinar from the virtual platform that has been specially created. A lot of people visiting the exhibition. And all this is apart from the actual 27 which are right with us on the uh, Zoom platform. So uh, this has been very great. More than 350, around 350 people. Uh, with us during this webinar. Uh, a great success. Uh, to end, uh, before 
we actually leave the meeting may i request uh, mr pandya the convener uh, of this webinar to please uh, propose a vote of thanks mr pandya please <clears throat> thank you uh, mr darmendra yes please uh, sorry thank you mr darmendra uh, uh, it was really indeed a very uh, enlightening uh, discussion today uh, both uh, from the uh, indian experts and leaders of the industry as well as the healthcare sector and the uh, uh, chamber of commerce and industry from kenya and africa we had a very good uh, picture of uh, the potential of the indian medical device industry to be the most reliable source uh, through mr rajiv nath to start with with uh, how uh, india can help uh, uh, the uh, african uh, healthcare services sector in supporting with a number of uh, medical device products manufactured at most uh, affordable prices with from the leading indian companies uh, we had uh, mr uh, mahesh desai who uh, very rightly explained how through eepc uh, uh, the collaboration and the technology transfers can be achieved uh, from india to the african companies and lastly not from the uh, from mr ravi sahab srivastav giving overview on the indian industry but ending up with the buying responsibilities also for the kenyan companies or african companies should look from india from the african side we had a very good uh, uh, overview from uh, dr eric rutto and he gave insight on the possibilities of cooperation with the kenyan companies then we had uh, dr elizabeth jitu and uh, she uh, talked about the healthcare services and also the uh, possibilities in the healthcare services uh, also and then lastly on behalf of dr mercy we had uh, mr mabua uh, inviting uh, cooperation with the ministry of kenya so uh, excellent uh, presentation from both the sides thank you very much uh, all the dignitaries and speakers of today's uh, uh, webinar i'm also i also thank for the massive participation from the visitors and the delegates for the webinar and uh, last but not the least i would like to invite all the delegates uh, to be part of our tomorrow's webinar with a the theme on safety and risk management for healthcare professionals hope you you enjoyed everybody enjoyed this uh, uh, webinar today thank you once again the dignitaries and the delegates thank you very much thank you very much mr pandya and uh, uh, friends uh, once again uh, i take this opportunity to invite everyone uh, to take a virtual tour of the trade show and join us in the two other webinars tomorrow and day after same place same time thank you very much it was great having everyone of you here thank you we end the meeting here thank you thank you very much thank you everyone appreciate the organization thank you so much sir thank, thank you sir thank you very much thank you thank you